Now let me conclude just by noting that nuclear weapons, um, I think, do add some strength of deterrence. And yet deterrence, in order to work, has to entail a threat that leaves something to chance. That is, you have to think, if I'm going to try to deter another country from attacking me conventionally with nuclear weapons, there has to be some risk that if that occurs, I'm going to use nuclear weapons and I may not want to ahead of time, but by making a threat, if an attack occurs anyway, there's something that could go wrong. So deterrence always encourages or always entails some risk that something could go wrong. Disarmament, however, also creates risks because if there is a risk of instability of small numbers and cheating, if you disarm, somebody else could cheat and you would have to move forward, potentially some people argue, with a rapid nuclear rearmament race and the first country to get nuclear weapons would be more likely to use them because they wouldn't be deterred by others. And to think about deterrence, you need to think very carefully about what are the risks of deterrence failing versus what are the risks of disarmament creating a condition where countries might try to acquire weapons and cheat. So therefore, as we think about the research necessary and the work necessary to create stable disarmament, instead of stable deterrence, we need to think about how to have intrusive, much more effective inspections of the International Atomic Energy Agency. We need to think about how could we have missile defenses that could have positive effects if a country has gotten rid of its nuclear weapons. Today, many people are concerned that if you acquire nu missile defense and have nuclear weapons, you might attack first with your nuclear weapons and use missile defense protect against a ragged second strike attack. So many people argue in favor of having constraints on missile defense. And yet, if you have a disarmed world, missile defense, even if it's imperfect, might be helpful because the first country to break out and acquire nuclear weapons can't really use them and that would give more time for a country under a defense shield to counter that with their own program. And the single most important factor, it strikes me, is whether the former nuclear weapon states, who right now, frankly, do not like other countries to get nuclear weapons, but also think that perhaps we could deter them with our own, would they unite against cheaters? Would Russia, the United States, China, France, and Great Britain work together to ensure that any country that is seen to be acquiring nuclear weapons in a f nuclear weapons free world is constrained either by sanctions or by military force. So I believe that a world without nuclear weapons will not necessarily be a peaceful world. It could be a world in which non-nuclear weapon states occasionally have to be punished by former nuclear weapon states for trying to break out of that condition. And yet even that world, I think, ultimately would be safer than the world in which we live today.